Welcome to another AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. We're going to address basic drilling fluids concepts in hopes that we can tackle far more complex problems in the future. Shale inhibition is one of the most important aspects of a drilling fluid system when it comes to drilling reactive formations. Although invert emulsion systems are considered superior to water-based systems as it relates to inhibition, Many water-based systems can be properly designed to minimize reactivity with the formations they encounter. The term shale is often used in the industry to describe a wide range of sedimentary rocks that are encountered in various drilling operations. The selection of a fluid system which minimizes its reactivity with the formation requires samples of that specific shale in order to conduct the necessary testing and analysis. There are several shale tests that are performed in order to provide a comprehensive characterization and ultimately a shale inhibition package in order to optimize a drilling fluid system. Some tests provide more insight than others while others should be taken with a grain of salt. Before shale testing is performed, the native shale must be collected based on proper sampling requirements. No two formations are identical, so therefore it is essential to test on actual shale material from the formation of interest. Formation samples usually consist of drill cuttings, cavings, or core material. The quality of the formation samples, including collection, preservation, and storage, are equally important to the accuracy of the test results. Improper cleaning and packaging of the shale samples at the rig site will compromise test results. Before attempting to understand how a specific shale behaves in the presence of fluids, it is helpful to characterize the material to provide fundamental information. Testing and observation reveal trends which allow for general classification. Shale samples are typically classified as low, moderate, or high reactivity clays based on their composition, structure, description, consolidation state, and CEC, or cation exchange capacity values. Let's discuss some of the common test procedures used for the initial shale analysis. XRD or X-ray diffraction is used to identify the individual minerals present in a shale sample. The sample is rotated while being illuminated by X-ray beams. The crystalline structure of each mineral causes the X-ray beams to be diffracted, resulting in a unique diffraction pattern for each mineral present in the sample. Cation exchange capacity is also determined, which is another indicator of the reactivity of the shale. The CEC value is an indicator of the reactivity level and is closely related with the content of highly reactive clay minerals such as smectite. Thin section is another useful tool which helps to understand the composition and structure of the shale samples. A small, thin sliver of rock is cut from a larger sample. A microscope is then used to provide images which assist in characterizing the texture, mineral distribution, bedding structure, and presence of fractures. The SEM, or Scanning Electron Microscope Test, also aids in evaluating mineralogy. Along with a skilled operator, the equipment can identify predominant minerals, structures, distribution, and potential mobile fine particulates. Some of these SEM machines have elemental analysis that can highlight specific elements. After performing the general upfront classification testing, further evaluation of the shale samples can then be performed in order to optimize a fluid formulation. Shale immersion testing is a basic but insightful technique used to evaluate shale stability and behavior in various fluids. Shale samples are submersed in the test solution in order to observe instability mechanisms over time, such as swelling, dispersive tendencies, or fractures. Time-lapse photography can be used to identify and document these instabilities. Comparative testing between water and varying brine solutions, with or without the use of shale inhibitors, is typically observed in this test. Shale dispersion testing measures the likelihood or degree to which shale cuttings will break down and remain in solution when interacting with the drilling fluid. This test can be used as a tool to design fluid systems that minimize the interaction between the drilling fluid and shale formations while drilling, or to screen the effectiveness of inhibitor additives in order to preserve the integrity of shale cuttings 
and prevent accumulation of colloidal fines in a mud system. Shell coatings are screened, dried, and weighed before being placed into a test solution. The sample is then agitated at a set time and temperature, typically in a roller oven. Afterwards, the shell cuttings are recovered and weighed to determine percent retention. It should be noted that the viscosity of a test fluid can influence the results of this test. Higher viscosity fluids will reduce the amount of mechanical erosion seen by the cuttings while being agitated. When running comparative testing, it is important that fluids have similar viscosities. Bulk hardness is designed to evaluate the hardness of a shale sample after being exposed to a drilling fluid. The hardness of a shale sample can be correlated to the level of shale inhibition provided by a drilling fluid. In this test, a shale sample is placed in the test solution and hot rolled at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for 16 hours. The shale sample is recovered with a 50 mesh sieve and extruded through a perforated plate using a torque wrench. The profile of torque readings required to extrude the sample relate to the intrinsic hardness of the shale. While drilling at overbalanced pressures, the filtrate of a drilling fluid can permeate the shale fabric of the wellbore. This leads to an increase in the near wellbore pressure, which can result in wellbore instability. The shale pressure transmission test measures the degree to which filtrate is able to invade the pore space of a formation. A core sample is placed in between two permeable membranes that separate the sample from upstream and downstream fluid reservoirs. The reservoirs are pressurized to simulate downhole conditions and allowed to come to equilibrium. The pressure on the upstream reservoir is then increased with a change in downstream pressure recorded to indicate the degree of filtrate invasion into the wellbore. Known as accretion or bitballing testing, this procedure measures the tendency of a shale to adhere to a steel surface, providing an indicator of the potential for bitballing while drilling. A cylindrical metal sleeve is hot rolled in a fluid for a set time interval. The metal sleeve is then weighed after the hot roll period, where shale may then be adhered to the sleeve, resulting in a quantifiable way of understanding its affinity for metal surfaces. This test can be used in part to identify the effectiveness of certain inhibitors. These products are sometimes referred to as anti-bitballing additives. The linear swell test is used to show how a shale reacts when interacting with a drilling fluid. A metal cell holds a perforated sample cage. A dried shale sample is ground and compressed to form a wafer and placed inside. Next, a metal piston is set on top of the shale sample. The metal cell is filled with fluid and a cap is dropped into place. A linear variable differential transformer consisting of an iron core and coil wrap tubing is used as a sensor to measure the volume expansion of the shell. An AC power source charges the inner coil and causes a voltage to be induced at each of the outer coils. Confined linearly by the sample cage, the shell wafer expands, forcing the piston upward, which in turn pushes the iron core up through the tubing. This alters the inductance of the transformer, causing a change in voltage seen by the two outer coils. This change in voltage is measured and sent to a computer by an analog to digital converter where it is converted to percent volume expansion of the shale. The linear swell test remains popular due to its low cost and ease of use, but does have drawbacks and limitations to consider. Preparation of the shale sample removes almost all of the cementation between the clay layers, which holds the material together and provides strength. In addition, air pockets can become trapped inside the shale when preparing a sample wafer to be tested. These trapped air pockets are compressed as the test fluid invades the pore space, and that air pressure can increase to a point where it will blow apart the shale from within, creating very misleading results. Originally developed for use in sewage treatment, the capillary suction time measures the time it takes for a shale slurry to travel a set distance across thick, porous filter paper. Like the linear swell meter, its popularity in shale testing is due to its low cost and ease of use, but the validity of the results from this test are questionable in their translation 
to shell reactivity. Studies have shown that the level of shear a sample receives significantly alters results, limiting test reproducibility. In summary, it's important to remember that shale testing and its interpretation requires a comprehensive analysis. There are several other tests performed. The more insightful tests are generally more complex and expensive. Cheaper ones are never insightful. Very few tests actually determine feasibility as it relates to drilling a shale formation. They simply show a performance difference relative to each other. Stay tuned for the second episode of this two-part tech tip where we discuss shale inhibition versus encapsulation in an overview of common shale inhibitors and their functions. That concludes this AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. Stay tuned for the next one, and if you want to learn more, have a listen to The Flow Line, our podcast. And if you want to improve your drilling fluid performance, reach out to us at AES Drilling Fluids, where better fluids equal better wells.